since we don't have a quorum quite yet, we'll begin in a subcommittee to give members more time to arrive. First bill we will be hearing is Senate Bill 1009, Senator Sirpoy. Please begin when you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senators. Uh, Mike Sirpoy, for the record, from the 8th Senate District in Jackson County. I'm here today to present Senate Bill 1009. Current law requires residential real property to be assessed at 19% of true value. We're all hearing from constituents about the difficulty of paying the taxes on our homes. It is a complex system that funds things like local schools, fire districts, law enforcement, and many other locals' needs. This bill reduces the assessment value of a home from 19% to 15% by 1% every two years to line up with, uh, with the uh, requirements of the biannual assessments ending in 2031. As a biannual, uh, uh, this doesn't include any inflation or increase in home value. I'm going to give you some, some examples of how this would apply. These, like I said, these examples don't have inflation or increased value of the homes in part of the consideration. As an example, a $200,000 home assessed at 19% is appraised value is $38,000. At the end of this phase in period, the value would be $30,000 and over 20% a reduction. With a $6 levy, this, this uh, means that people would be paying taxes on this $200,000 house of $2,160. This reduces that to $1,800 again after this is completely phased in. The reason for the phase-in period is so this is not so disruptive to these local economies when it first happens. I think it will, it will if it's uh, passed and implemented, it would not cause chaos. Uh, additionally, many, many districts, I know in my uh, Senate district, all of my school districts are quite a bit under their cap as far as what the levy allows because of the Hancock rollbacks over the last few years. And so the truth is, and probably in my districts, uh, I don't know about some of the rural districts, but in my districts it may not even save any money because they would just float the cap up to whatever the maximum would be. Uh, so uh, that's something that each district will have to, have to decide. But my, att my attempt here is just to reduce the taxes, the total assessed value from 19 to 15% over a period of five years, and then leave it at 15 going forward. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the Senator? Would anyone like to testify in favor of the bill? Please come forward. Anyone like to testify in opposition? Informational purposes? Oh. And were you opposition? I think so, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was absolutely torn because, no. so autophage on behalf of Missouri NEA, uh, I, I, we'd like to just speak briefly. Um, I appreciate that uh, about 60% of what our schools have available to re fund our programs across the state comes from local revenues. About 30% comes from the state. And so obviously we have to take very seriously and proceed very carefully when we're changing the process by which those local revenues come in because it's it's the bigger piece of what funds our schools across the state. And so uh, we appreciate that the, the, <coughs> the sponsor bringing for, forward an, an approach, and he may be correct, and it would be important for the committee to look very carefully. This bill has a really big, scary fiscal note of close to a billion dollars when fully implemented to local uh, uh, governments, including schools. It's, as a practical matter, it may not actually play out that way but if it does, the committee needs to be, or if it doesn't, it needs, the committee needs to be aware that reducing the real estate residential piece uh, in a revenue neutral way if the tax rolls up is in effect uh, a property tax shift to other sectors, personal property tax, agricultural property, and commercial. So we, we would urge the committee to proceed very cautiously on anything that makes these sorts of significant changes and to be aware of, and we're happy to work offline. This is, a, as the sponsor said, this is a really complicated topic. Happy to work offline if the committee is wanting to move forward on anything in this, in this area. But happy to answer questions now if that's helpful. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the witness? Senator Beck? So, so my concern is, uh, and um, 
and this is for the for the bill sponsor too and we've had this conversation is we have so many other tax cuts coming to our local governments in throughout the in different stages in the legislatures like what are we what exactly is going to happen at the end of the day or is are we going to be cutting to the bone or are we not you know what i mean i i don't know to add another one to it uh this one actually is pretty straightforward um you know compared to some of the other ones but but it's pretty straightforward but it's also got a huge huge fiscal note and it's straightforward in the policy and the particular change change it made but when you're pulling one string here it's really complicated yeah. in what overall effect it produces. Yeah, and, and, and we even have a, a bill that we're trying to fix, SB 190 from that's last next year. That's on the calendar, as I recall. Yeah, that's going to be up on the floor. So we're we're trying to fix that one. So we don't even know what the cost of that is going forward. And and I and I know the senator and I have had conversations about this stuff. Um, but I I mean I just hate this. I can't go forward with it. I mean, the uncertainty is so crazy that that uh, you know even the senator over here has a has a. Uh, one we debated a little earlier in, in, in uh, last week, I guess it was, um, but I, I'm not sure where we're going with all this and what what this is going to do to our schools, our fire, all these other things that we have that depend on these local taxes. So, if I could just add one more thing, it's a really good point to point out all the other balls in the air right now. For example, the potential fix on the senior citizens and also the other there's many bills moving in a significant way that will affect personal property uh, we would urge the committee and the Senate to really think about the overall impact of all those together uh, and not just silo one and the yeah. other and I, and I think the center we've talked about this I know nobody likes task forces but I would love to see something formed that we could have actually a, a really good discussion on some of these things and decide what we wanted to do going forward to to if we have to give relief to folks give it to the people that maybe need it the most any other questions for the witness saying none thank, thank you very you, much Jim. anyone else would like to testify in opposition to the bill please come forward informational purposes only Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Kenny Moore. I'm the Boone County Assessor. Um, and I commend. Uh, sorry, could you talk a little bit closer to the mic, please? Yeah, I'm Thank sorry. you. I, I commend the Senator in, in not being so aggressive in the way he's trying to cut the taxes. Um, he's phasing it in uh, because a lot of these bills that we see, it's just boom. And, you know, they try to just cut it all at once. And that does put a very, very big hardship on the taxing jurisdictions all at once. So, but um, as far as the bill goes, um, Howe County Assessor indicated to me that the first year of this bill, Howe County would lose $113,783 in tax revenue. Now that might not seem like a lot, but he says 90% of that is directly public, school, public schools. Um, Boone County, my county, um, in the uh, in the first year, I would lose um, 124 over 124 million dollars in assessed value. Um, I would also lose roughly, along with that 170 or 124 thousand um, dollars, I would lose approximately. Um, about a little over eight million dollars in local revenue. Cape Girardeau County um, assessor indicated to me that um, he would lose roughly um, about forty-one million dollars in assessed value and close to two million dollars in tax revenue just in the first year. Um, <clears throat> for um, lowering the assessed value will force the taxing jurisdictions basically one alternative if they're not at their ceiling and they will raise their levies um, we've seen it time and time again my largest school district in Boone County this year I went through reassessment in 2023 my largest school district increased their levy so instead of rolling it back so uh, a lot of these jurisdictions are false now a lot of the smaller districts your fire districts your ambulance districts things like that they pretty much might be at their ceiling and they have no room to recoup this so it's going to put a hardship on them 
And, um, and finally, one, one last point I'd like to make is the fact that, and I think the last witness uh, indicated this, um, lowering the assessed value of one particular subclass um, and raising and the, school, and the jurisdictions increasing their levies is basically going to uh, increase everybody across the board. So you would see an increase in personal property taxes, you would see an increase in commercial taxes, and you would see an increase in agriculture taxes. So I'll be glad to take any questions. Does anyone have any questions for the witness? Saying none, thank you very much. Please be sure to leave a witness for him. Anyone else that would like to speak for informational purposes only? Saying none, Senator, do you have any closing remarks? No, just that, that uh, I think the Senator Beck said that there's a lot of these bills out there floating, and I think maybe somebody taking charge and, and between commercial, personal, and, and residential property, I think people need to find something, and maybe we need to have something put together to study it. Cause we, something needs to be done, but it needs to be done in a smart way. So I appreciate the hearing very much, Senator. Thank you. This concludes the hearing for Senate Bill 1009. Next up, we will be hearing Senate Bill 1179. Senator Koenig, please begin when you're ready. Hello, Senator Andrew Kane from the 15th District here to present Senate Bill 1179. So I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Um, what this bill is dealing with is this is dealing with um, tax credits. Um, I consider these more of the, the social side. Obviously, a lot of the economic ones I'm, I'm against. Um, a few years ago when we passed the heartbeat bill, we raised um, the donation of the tax credit up to 70% for pregnancy resource centers. These put, this is putting these programs up in, in line with that. Um, that way, um, some of these groups make it easier for them to raise money for the program, like the Youth Opportunity and Violence Prevention Tax Credits. So with that, I'll happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions for the Senator? Senator Beck? Just a comment. So the uh, I actually dealt with the Neighborhood Assistance Tax Credits, and it's really a great program. Um, that helped uh, quite a few folks during co during COVID, and that we we got some uh, some things done with that. So um, yeah, I'm definitely for increasing that. Any other questions for the senator? Seeing none, uh, do we have anyone that would like to testify in favor of the bill? Please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senators, Tom Dempsey, Registered Lobbyist for Catholic Charities, Archdiocese of St. Louis. Uh, first, we'd like to thank uh, Senator Koenig for filing this legislation. Um, as the Senator pointed out, um, there's a disparity now between the Pregnancy Resource Credit and a couple other credits and, and NAP and YAP. And uh, why that's important is um, we have a number of organizations that, that uh, we, raise, we, we raise millions of dollars uh, to support um, people you serve. Um, St. Patrick's Center, Mary Grove are just a couple of those. Uh, we have the same donors for Pregnancy Resource and for these programs. And so what we're seeing is that our donors are moving to the one that is most tax advantageous um, and, and using NAP and YAP less. Um, because the, NAP and YAP are capped programs that go through a, a competitive uh, process through the Department of Economic Development. Um, you know, we would challenge the fiscal note that's, that's on the bill um, because, like I said, we have people that are already donating to an uncapped 70% program. So uh, this would just help NAP and YAP and the organizations that they support, and uh, we hope that you will support this change. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank please you. be sure to leave Thanks. witness form. Next up, in favor of the bill, please come forward. Uh, good morning. Katie Gamble here on behalf of the Missouri Coalition for Children. I want to go on record and support um, and just echo everything that's already been said. Any questions for the witness? Thank you very much. Thanks. 
Anyone else would like to testify in favor of the bill? Would anyone like to testify in opposition? Informational purposes only? Senator, you have any closing remarks? Thank you for the hearing. Thank you. All right, next bill to being heard is Senate Bill 1029. Senator Moon, please begin when you're ready. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and committee. I'm Mike Moon. I represent the Missouri 29th Senatorial District, and I'm here to present Senate Bill 1029. And uh, this is a, a an elimination of the, the corporate tax over a period of five years it, with the increments of 0.8% per year. Um, we have seen since the implementation of the current tax credit or tax deduction of 4% an increase in revenues. And so that's a testament to the fact that when taxes are lowered, businesses are attracted to the state. And I think if we continue going on an incremental basis, in fact, it, it, if I had my preference, I'd do it all tomorrow. But since we can't do that, um, an incremental uh, state would bring that down to zero uh, in 2029. And um, I think the businesses will be attracted to the state just like they are today. Um, some will ask, well, why should we give back money to business owners? And um, there are business owners in the, the room and even on committee who I think realize that when uh, money is allowed to stay in your hands, you can do several different things with it. You can spend it, you can invest it, uh, you can save it, and all that results in increased revenues to the state. Uh, one point about tax credits, we, we heard a bill just recently and there are several moving through the system. Uh, the Tax Foundation stated that when a state offers tax credits, that indicates that taxes are too high. Um, just a few years ago, I recall the tax credits were at a level of half a billion dollars, and I think if things go the way they're headed this year, it'll raise up to about 670 uh, million. And so I think that's a, um, an indicator that we probably could lower taxes. And when people have more money, they're going to spend it. Uh, I talked to Governor Parson last year. He said, get the bill to his desk and he'd sign it. And um, any questions, I'd be happy to answer if I can. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the, for the Senator? Before we uh, go into witnesses, we're going to establish a quorum now that we have four here. Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Brown. Here. Senator Esslinger. Here. Senator Beck. Senator Eigel. <clears throat> Senator Fitzwater. Here. Senator Huff. Senator Roberts. And since we do have a quorum, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. We are now in executive session. I move that Senate Bill 1250 be brought before the committee. Do I have a second? This is Senator Koenig's bill we heard last week, Senate Bill 1250 modifies five provisions relating to the taxation of pass-through entities. I move that the committee vote do pass Senate Bill 1250. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Brown? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Beck? Eigel? Fitzwater? Huff, Roberts. <clears throat> By your vote of three to one, you have voted to do pass Senate Bill 1250. I now move that Senate Bill 1225 be brought before the committee. Do I have a second? This is Senator Moon's bill we heard last week. Senate Bill 1225 creates an income tax deduction for certain dependents. I move that the committee vote do pass Senate Bill 1225. Do I have a second? Is there any discussion? 
Seeing none, secretary, please call the roll. Brown. Aye. Esslinger. Aye. Beck. Aye. Eigel. Fitzwater. Huff. Roberts. By your vote of four to zero, you have voted to do pass Senate Bill 1225. I now move that Senate Bill 1036 be brought before the committee. Do I have a second? This is Senator Razor's amateur sports bill we heard a few weeks ago. Uh, a substitute has been distributed. The substitute uh, still extends the sunset on the tax credit from August 28th. 2025 to August 28, 2031. However, removes the, the increase on the cap. I move that the committee adopt Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 1036. Do I have a second? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have adopted the Senate committee substitute. I now move that the committee vote do pass. Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 1036. Do I have a second? Call the roll. Brown. Aye. Esslinger. Aye. Beck. Eigel. Fitzwater. Huff. Roberts. By your vote of four to zero, you have voted to do pass Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 1036. I now make a motion to move out of executive session and resume our regular hearing. Do I have a second? We are now out of executive session. So back to the hearing for Senate Bill 1225 or 1029. Is there anyone that would like to testify in favor of the bill? Please come forward. Good afternoon, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Chuck Pierce here today on behalf of Associated Industries of Missouri to go on record in support of this. We supported it in the past it as a phase in to, to reduce this over time. So we have to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you very much. Next up in favor, please come forward. Good afternoon, members of the committee. Philip Barnes, I'm with the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We'd like to go on the record and support. Um, lower taxes uh, encourages businesses to locate to Missouri, um, along with many other factors that they look at, but taxes is definitely one of the important ones. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak in favor of the bill? Please come forward. Would anyone like to testify in opposition? <laughs> well, I thought that Senator Moon and I actually had been disappointed if we failed to show up again to oppose the bill, but maybe, maybe he's changed his mind on that. Otto Fajan on behalf of Missouri NEA, uh, we would register our uh, opposition to Senate Bill 1029. On the previous bill, I mentioned that the state contributes about 30 percent of what schools on the average spend. But for many of our districts, it's, it's more significant than that. If they don't have local resource, 
And so at this time, this state is looking at doing some positive things, uh, particularly on teacher salaries. Our teacher starting salary in Missouri is essentially the lowest in the nation. And so our concern is this state currently has a number of income tax cuts in, on the individual income tax side, essentially booked but not yet implemented. And we have a revenue structure that has been kind of hit like a bell by a massive infusion of federal funding. And this legislature doesn't necessarily have the data to understand where that's going to shake out in a couple of years, but it could be in a negative direction compi compounded with additional tax cuts coming online. And then we look at the fiscal note on this bill, which is about $885 million on the corporate tax side, plus the, FI, the federal in, uh, institutions, the fin financial institutions tax is about $30 million. Uh, we're just concerned that any progress that the legislature might want to make on recruitment and retention and teacher salaries could be undermined by a cut of this magnitude. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank, thank you very you, much. Jim. Next up in opposition. Hi, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Senators. Uh, my name is Jeremy LaFavor, and I'm here today on behalf of the Missouri Budget Project. <clears throat> Much of, of, of what we wanted to cover was covered by Mr. Fajan pretty well. Uh, the, the fiscal note is significant with the additional tax cuts that the state has on the books coming up. Uh, in addition to some other revenue uh, uh, changes, it would spell potential, uh, uh, you know, significant economic consequences for the state uh, moving forward. Uh, for something like this, we'd recommend waiting until all the tax cuts have phased in and seeing where the state shakes out and then taking a look at it. That said, while I appreciate my good friends at the Associated Industries in Missouri and the Chamber of Commerce um, and, and certainly their position, when you, when you ask uh, corporate executives and recruiters what are the top things that draw companies to the state, it's access to workforce, it's an educated workforce, um, it's a host of other things. Uh, number uh, 30, no, excuse me, 23 on the list is corporate tax rates. Before that, we see labor costs, energy costs, shipping costs, raw materials, and things like that. Um, so we would encourage uh, the committee to continue to, to move forward with its current tax policy and see how things shake out and uh, hopefully make some progress in some of the things that Mr. Fajan spoke about. Be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for the witness? What was that? Um that statistic that you cited, some kind of survey or something? I'll make sure I get that to the committee. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would anyone like to testify in opposition to the bill? Please come forward. Anyone for informational purposes only? Senator, any closing remarks? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of uh, comments from some businesses in the area that I failed to mention during my presentation was that one particular company mentioned that it would be huge for, for their particular company. They could hire more, more techs. Um, they're busting at the seams, according to this particular business owner. Increasing existing employee wages for retention would be something they could do. They could hire more, more marketing staff for continued growth of the company. And another one, you'd probably recognize the name. I won't mention it right here, but um, his dad was in the legislature, both here and nationally. Um, he said expansion with opportunity for employee growth would occur if they had more money to work with. And um, with regard to the uh, funding for schools, I'm curious as to has a, the funding decreased since the um, corporate, in, um, corporate income tax has been reduced. I don't think it has, so I think what we'd see is steady growth in businesses and uh, the ship would still uh, be sailing as far as the school uh, funding would be concerned if we reduced and eliminated the, the corporate income tax. So thank you for allowing me to present the bill today. Thank you, Senator. This concludes the hearing for Senate Bill 1029. Next up, we have Senate Bill 823, Senator Hoskins. Begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, member of the committee, 
For the record, State Senator Denny Hoskins here today to present Senate Bill 823. Senate Bill 823 deals with reducing the corporate income tax rate. So in fiscal year 2017, the net revenue after refunds from corporate income taxes was about $276 million. In fiscal year 2022, it was $909 million. Uh, Missouri currently ranks as the ninth lowest corporate income tax rate. However, others are starting to gain on us. Uh, states like South Dakota and Wyoming have 0% income tax or corporate income tax rate. North Carolina is getting down to a 2.2% or 2.25% income tax rate. Uh, we have other surrounding states that although they may currently be higher in the corporate income tax rate. They're working on some reductions as well. What my bill would do, it would be an automatic 0.25% um, corporate income rec tax rate deduction, and then that would be cut by 0.5% uh, for every $50 million in revenue, uh, corporate income tax revenue that's received. Uh, some other states have, have very similar provisions. Uh, Kansas, which I hate to give any credence to Kansas, but they actually have a, they, they've got something where they'll reduce it by 0.5% corporate income tax rate when a qualified firm comes into the state of Kansas. And so with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Senator. Any questions? Could you, oh, I wasn't here earlier. Could you tell me what, the, what is the difference between Senator Moon's and yours corporate tax reduction? You're at uh, 0.25 and then redu reduces down annually by 0.5. Do you recall? Um, I, you're I talking you talking about Senator Moon's? I don't know the difference between the yeah, two. Yeah, I'm not, for, I, I was not in here I'll for Senator out, Moon when, when he, uh, yeah, mine's uh, a 0.25% automatic and then it would reduce by 0.5% um, for every $50 million in additional corporate income tax revenue to be and it could go down as low as 2.25%, which is what North Carolina is going to. Okay. I, I should assume you don't want to talk about somebody else's legislation. <laughs> right. But uh, I'll, I'll find out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone that would like to testify in favor of the bill, please come forward. Again, uh, Chuck Pierce appearing on behalf of Associated Industries of Missouri, go on record in support. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? Next up in favor of the bill. Good afternoon, members of the committee. Philip Arnson with the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and we would like to go on the record in support. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? Thank you very much. Next up in favor of the bill, please come forward. Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Otto Fajon on behalf of Missouri NEA. I guess for consistency, we should speak in opposition to this similar change, although I will note that there's a difference of scale uh, this only reduces the corporate income tax in part, and it has sort of a structure that limits the amount of impact on general revenue. So it'll have an overall negative effect from, compared to where we would be, but it seems less likely to produce a significant downward trend, whereas Senator Moon's bill completely uh, moves away from the corporate income tax 0.8% per year, regardless of its, of its impact down the road. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Th Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up in opposition, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, committee. Jeremy LeFevre appearing today on behalf of the Missouri Budget Project. Um, similar concerns that we had to Senator Moon's uh, legislation. Uh, the impact on the general revenue fund as well as um, there are uh, other ways to, to provide tax relief uh, that generate uh, improved economic output than this one and we would encourage the committee to look in that direction. Thank you. Any questions for the witness? Saying none, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to the bill, please come forward. Anyone that would like to testify for informational purposes? 
Senator, would you do you have any closing remarks? Um, just you know, to, not to reiterate the point, but like I said, in fiscal year 2017, we had net revenue from corporate income tax after refunds of 276 million dollars. Fiscal year 2022, that had grown to 909 million dollars. It would be, um, I think, behoove us to give some of this back to the corporations so they can hire additional employees and and to attract additional businesses here to Missouri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, what was the, the first year that you cited, the 276 million? Yeah, two, 276 million in fiscal year 2017. That's after refunds. And then, and I can, I can get you a copy of this too. Okay, that'd be great. And then $909 million in fiscal year 2022. Oh, actually, oh. I, corrected uh, after refunds that was 711 million dollars in 2022 gross was 909 in 2022 but net after refunds for comparison purposes was 711 million all right thank you very much this concludes the hearing for senate bill 823 with no further business coming for the committee i now make a motion to adjourn do i have a second, second. we are adjourned here's my hammer Bam. Boom. Well, I guess they took it away. The so one time we don't bring it. <laughs> Thank you. I guess now we always bring it. Oh, no work.